Well, earlier in the show, we told you with just over a little more than 13 hours left in the legislative session, none of the key bills have been finalized at the state capitol. Hamlin Law Professor David Schultz, a political analyst, joins us now to talk about this. Uh, let's, just, let's start on the one thing they apparently have done, which is to get rid of the presidential caucuses in yes. Minnesota. How big a deal is that? That's a big deal because, first off, I think the reason why they got it done is there was enough people upset about the fact that, that our, our caucus system didn't work this time um, and that that was really the big push. Why this is a big deal? It's, on, it's a big deal on two scores, scores. First score is that it's going to allow more people to participate, which means we're going to allow for early voting. We're going to allow for people to vote from 7 in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. Lots of more people are going to be able to participate. Second thing, it's a big deal because it'll make it easier for us to be a player on the national presidential campaign circuit. Caucuses are okay, but primaries where they actually count votes means even more, and people's votes will really matter now in a primary as opposed to a caucus. So it's a big deal. All right. Well, let's talk about what they haven't done. I have a logistics question for you. They haven't done all of these bills. Can they physically do it by midnight tonight? Practically no at this point because they're not even close to frameworks. I mean, at least you could say, okay, maybe if they had frameworks done, they could do something. And if they had a framework for agreements, they could say, okay, we're not going to finish, but then we come back in special session perhaps. It doesn't even sound like they have frameworks at this point, but a lot of what's going on now as they're starting to put together these bills, they've got to be written up. The reviser of statutes, an office we don't usually hear about, is actually the one that does sort of like the drafting. They've got to draft, copy, distribute. We're just talking about at some point physically getting certain things done and, and it within time constraints. On top of which, we should think about the fact that we've got hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars at stake being made by tired legislators who are groggy and pressed. I'm not sure this is the right way to make policy. All right, and even even if it does get put together, they won't have time to read it. Exactly, so we're gonna looking at an awful lot of stuff that could be thousands of pages that they're just gonna basically vote up or vote down based upon recommendations of leadership. We may find all kinds of errors and mistakes in it. So, so at this point, even if they can pass anything, and I'm, and I'm skeptical that they're going to get to all the major work at this point, um, you question how good it is and how thought it, thoughtful it is. All right. Let's talk about the fact that the entire legislature is up for election in November. If they don't get things done, which it certainly appears that they, they can't get it all done, what are the consequences? Well, of course, the consequences are the fact that we, we could potentially see a lot of legislators not get reelected. But the reality is we probably have no more than probably about a dozen or so seats in the House of Representatives that are truly swing, about eight or ten in the Senate. And the reason why I mention that, and this explains also why they're not getting anything done, in the vast majority of seats in Minnesota, they're either solidly Democrat or solidly Republican, and there's very little incentive to compromise. And so I would say that What's, what's at stake here is only a small number of seats, but it's only going to take a small number of seats to really switch the control for both of the houses. And so the upshot, what I'm getting at here, is that is that it's possible that the voters will retaliate in those very few districts, and we could see it among those very few seats, um, the control of the Senate or the House shifting. All right. I just heard in my ear our producer said that uh, Rachel Slavic monitoring the feeds here uh, from the Capitol says that there appears to be some movement on real ID, no final agreement yet. Uh, what are the consequences if they don't get something done on that? That is huge. From, from a point of view of, of the fact that we would not be able to use our driver's license to board airplanes and for a whole... Eventually. Bit, event, eventually. Not right away, but eventually. And there may be other areas in terms of visiting to, like, let's say, military installations and so forth. If I think of an area where the... F where they're making the biggest mistake is on the real ID. Because if we think about how this impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis, or as the summer season starts to kick in, in terms of wanting to travel you know, across the country on an airplane, this, this is, it's like the TSA lines at this point. People will see that and will be very angry about it. This is something that everybody agrees needs to be done, and they can't even get something as basic as this done. Again, it speaks to the lack of political incentives and the lack of leadership together in terms of the inability to be able to do this. All right, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, Pat Kessler will be covering this. Uh, he will be here uh, all day and well into the night to cover what happens or what doesn't happen at the Capitol. Thank you so much, Professor David Schultz. You're welcome. Uh,